About two years ago, I did something a little bit different. It was a camera review, and that's not what's different, but it was a point and shoot camera, or a bridge camera if you prefer that term, the Nikon P1000. I learned two things when I published that review. Number one, a lot of you watched and continue to watch that video and are interested in my impressions of the camera. And two, a lot of people have very different but very strong opinions about the P1000. Today, I'm talking about the P950, not the P1000, but the two can never really be discussed completely separate from each other because they are very similar cameras in form and function with some differences, but the P950 costs less. Before we get into this any further, if you are new here, hello, my name is Lee. I post videos every week sharing my own photography and videography through gear reviews, adventures, and technique discussion. I also have complete courses available if you want to dive deep into learning individual topics with me. My courses and a number of other benefits are available to my members. You can learn more about channel membership at the link in the description of this video. So Raymond and I started thinking about reviewing the P950 and like I said, so many of you were enthusiastic about the P1000 review. We got kind of excited about it. Raymond and I said to each other, wonderful spouse, we need to review this camera. <laughs> so we looked at the specs and the website, and then we wrote to Nikon to borrow one, and they said no. So we rented this one from Lens Rentals, and obviously we have it right now. Raymond and I have each taken the camera out, and I will share photos and video that we captured throughout this video. So let's talk about the camera. For one, 99% of my 28 minute Nikon P1000 review applies to this P950. So I will link that video below for a very in-depth look. Do watch that video because seriously, the sensor, the very good stabilization, the photo and video modes, all the same. But there is one large difference between the P950 and the P1000. The P1000 zooms to a 3000 millimeter equivalent field of view with a 125x zoom, while the P950 zooms to a 2000 equivalent field of view with an 83x zoom, which incidentally is the same as the P950's predecessor, the P900. If you do watch that longer form P1000 review, you will hear me say this. Where you start to have trouble keeping the camera steady will likely be different from me, but I found that I was pretty stable at 1,000 millimeters, but by 2,000 millimeters, it was getting pretty challenging. That zoom range, that's the story here. You buy this camera to get images that you couldn't normally get because you might be too far away. Or from what I've heard from many people, is to simply use it as a monocular for bird watching. <laughs> With the 2000 millimeter focal length on this P950, you never seem to be too far away, while still allowing 24 millimeters on the wide end, which introduces a lot of flexibility. Check out this situation. You can see that I appear to be in the middle of nowhere, which is actually a dry lake bed, but I promise you there was a herd of elk in the distance that I could just barely make out with my eyeballs. This is what I was able to capture with the P950 at 2000 millimeters. I know that a lot of serious photographers turn up their noses at the small sensor in this camera, but my being able to photograph some of these elk when there is absolutely no way in HE double hockey sticks that I was getting any closer to them. I mean, have you seen an elk in person? They are massive. And this was a whole herd of them. And every time I moved, a whole bunch of them would stop munching on grass and stare at me. <laughs> My point here is, say what you will about the sensor. These photos are impressive for a camera that costs $800. And let's go ahead and add in that the camera is all in one, meaning that you can go from wide angle to super duper telephoto without carrying a camera bag full of lenses. Now that I've said how great it is, what's the catch? And the answer depends on what you're after. Those of you who are used to full frame sensor interchangeable lens cameras, you'll admire the zoom, but you might be frustrated with the characteristics of the image. The colors are great. The Clarity is just fine, but with the small sensor, you tend to see less depth in an image. 
And what is really the challenge is the higher ISO settings in lower light situations. Like I said, this is a small sensor. That's what allows Nikon to keep the lens relatively small for the amount of telephoto that it brings. But that small sensor is always why cameras like the P950 simply will not perform as well in low light as cameras like these. Also, you aren't shooting rapid fire, like with a Nikon D6, for example. Yes, it can capture up to seven frames per second, but it's not quite responsive like a pro camera. And the buffer is about 10 shots or even less if you're capturing your images in RAW. After the buffer fills up, the camera has to take a short break and you lose a lot of the functions. You can't zoom or change settings to get ready for your next burst. In addition to being mindful about when you press that shutter release button, this isn't a camera that has all of the high-end autofocus features. It does have some tracking features, but I ended up not using them because they really just aren't anywhere near the level of the higher end Nikon interchangeable lens cameras. So while I did do wildlife photography with it, I worked with the camera rather than expecting high end features in this more entry level camera. I used AFF and single point autofocus, which is actually called manual in the menu, which is a little bit confusing, but I chose my moments to press the shutter release button. I used my technique and my patience to get the images that I wanted. Let's talk a bit more about specifications and usability. Like the P1000, the P950 does have raw shooting. The older P900 does not. So if that's important to you, the P950 and P1000 are your choices here. It really is that zoom and slightly smaller form factor and lighter weight that are different. Most other aspects are the same or very close. If you put both of them in my hands, I would be hard pressed to tell you which one was in which hand. This is an easy to configure and easy to use camera. The menus are not as intense as DSLR or Z series menus, but they have some of the same DNA and flexibility. You can have the camera take almost all of the control or very little or somewhere in between. <laughs> We were up and running with it very quickly with just a, a couple of minutes to get the hang of button locations and our favorite menu items. Today's Camera Olympics is not complete without a discussion on image quality. We all want good pictures on our screens, but also in print and the P950 delivered. Again, just the same as the P1000 did. They're crisp, sharp, and vibrant as long as I was at a lower ISO setting. One funny thing here is that I shared photos of ospreys in a nest in my P1000 review. This is the same nest, and this osprey was just building it up again for the spring after having been gone all winter. It was such a treat to watch him or her retrieving sticks. It was definitely a bird on a mission, and I'm glad I was able to compare the P950 osprey photos with the P1000 osprey photos. There have been quite a lot of comments on my P1000 review about how the phone is a better camera or about other point and shoot options with larger sensors. So here's where I see this camera, along with the P1000, fitting into today's camera landscape. The more normal point and shoot camera similar sensor to this one, but with a much shorter zoom range and usually a smaller form factor, is just about obsoleted by the camera on your phone. But your phone can't do what the P950 can when it comes to zoom range. So instead of saying that the P950 is a direct competitor to a larger sensor interchangeable lens system, in my mind, the P950 is going to get you the shots that your phone won't. To me, that's the story here. This is for the person who simply isn't going to purchase or carry a large and heavy telephoto lens for their interchangeable lens camera, or for the person who wants an easy to use camera, as simple as their phone, but they want it to deliver that telephoto goodness while still having the capability to zoom out to a wide angle shot. We've seen all sorts of reactions to this camera and the P1000 usually very strong reactions one way or the other. And hey, I can be a bit of a gear snob when it comes to results, but when you understand what you have here and what you don't, when you have the knowledge to get the settings right and the technique and the patience to back it up, this can be a very powerful tool that can get you shots otherwise not practical or feasible to capture. Speaking of settings and technique, 
A Basics of Photography course is one of the complete courses I offer. In it, I go step by step so that you understand the foundations of photography, which will set you up for success no matter what kind of camera you have or what type of photography you're doing. Again, there is a link in the description to learn more about channel membership. Also, while we mainly focused on wildlife with this P950, we did do portraits and more landscape work with the P1000. So you can check out the P1000 review linked in the description if you want to see how this camera would perform for those types of photography, because the P950 would behave exactly the same as the P1000 in those situations. Well, our rental period has ended, so it's time to pack this baby up and send it back, but we can certainly answer your questions in the comments below. Also, the community is large and knowledgeable, so if you do have questions about this camera or others, always feel free to engage in those comments. Please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Those things are a big help for the channel. Thank you for watching.